डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड माई टीचर फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार आई वेलकम यू टू द प्रेजेंटेशन लेक्चर ऑन स्वालोइंग नाउ बिफोर आई स्टार्ट दिस प्रेजेंटेशन लेक्चर आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू फ्यू थिंग्स रिगार्डिंग दिस प्रेजेंटेशन लेक्चर दैट इन दिस लेक्चर देर आर टोटल ट्वेल्व थियरी पॉइंट्स एंड आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन ऑल दिस Twelve theory points with the help of figures. So during this lecture, you need to observe all the figures closely and carefully. Okay. So now I am starting this lecture. Now the first point that is coming on our screen that the definition of the swallowing. Now the other name. for the process of swallowing swallowing is also known as deglutition now what is swallowing or the deglutition see daily we are taking our lunch our dinner and we are also taking the breakfast so so daily we are taking various kind of food so basically we are eating so the eating process or the taking the food in our mouth in biology it is known as the process of ingestion now so since we have <coughs> entered the food in our mouth that is the oral cavity or the buccal cavity in biology okay and now we are chewing the food with the help of our teeth now during the chewing of food the salivary gland this secretes saliva so the chewed food now mixes with the saliva okay and then when the bolus is made we voluntarily swallow the food so due to the swallowing process due to due to the act of swallowing that is also known as the deglutition process the food moves from our mouth into the stomach so here as you can see in the figure the green color bolus is right now it is in the oral cavity and it is reaching into the stomach so the movement of food from mouth to stomach is achieved by the act of swallowing or the deglutition now <clears throat> how we are able to swallow the food how we swallow the bolus or how the bolus reaches to the stomach that is the question so now as you can see this is the entire journey of the bolus so bolus is right now in the buccal cavity then it enters into the pharynx and from pharynx it is entering into the esophagus so during this entire journey or this entire passage this three organ that is the mouth pharynx and esophagus we know in the mouth we have already studied the topic of the salivary gland so the salivary gland secretes saliva so now the bolus has mixed with the saliva and the saliva we know it is watery and also the slippery one okay then when the bolus moves from the pharynx and esophagus so in the wall of the pharynx and the esophagus there are the mucus gland which secrete mucus so there are two factors one with the bolus there is a saliva which is mix and there are the mucus secretion from the wall of pharynx and the esophagus so due to this there is a smooth passage okay for the bolus so the journey of the bolus towards the stomach becomes very smooth okay so that is the meaning of this line how the deglutition is facilitated by the secretion of saliva and the mucus 
so with this we have completed the first point of our discussion now the stages of swallowing now first of all there are three stages for the swallowing mechanism first stage it is voluntary stage and the remaining two stages that is the pharyngeal stage and the esophageal stage they are the involuntary stages once again first stage is the voluntary stage and the remaining two that is the pharyngeal and the esophageal stage they are the involuntary stages now in the voluntary stage what is happening the bolus is passed into the oro pharynx so in the figure i am showing you as you can see here the green color bolus is shown in the buccal cavity and this bolus over here it is entering into the oro pharynx so this process okay where the bolus from oral cavity it enters into the oro pharynx this is the voluntary stage and why this voluntary stage or sometimes in some books you will find this first stage is known as the buccal stage and why this buccal stage is the voluntary one see we are daily we are eating various kind of food okay and when we taste the food if the taste of food is good so that time we will swallow it we decide that the ta the taste is good so we are eating it we are swallowing it okay so it is we are deciding it so it is the voluntary action okay and in the rest of two stages the bolus automatically by the process of peristalsis by the mechanism of peristalsis it pass it reach to the stomach so in that the we there is no voluntary action is involved it is automatically by its own that two stages occurring so that's why those two stages are the involuntary stages and in first stage that is the voluntary one in which the bolus ent enters into the oropharynx that we are deciding that we are eating or not we are swallowing or not that's why this first stage is the voluntary one okay now the name of the second stage is the pharyngeal stage okay and i as i have told you earlier that this is the involuntary passage of the bolus through the pharynx into the esophagus so in the pharyngeal stage what is happening in the pharyngeal stage bolus from oropharynx it entering into the esophagus okay so bolus from oropharynx it moves into the esophagus that is the pharyngeal stage and the third stage that is the esophageal stage now what is happening in esophageal stage so the bolus in went involuntarily pass from esophagus into the stomach that is the esophageal stage from esophagus bolus enters into the stomach involuntarily that final stage third stage is known as the esophageal stage so now moving on the third point of our discussion okay 
this is the third point now when the swallowing begins when the swallowing starts so now as you can see over here it is written when the bolus is forced to the back of the oral cavity into the oropharynx so as you can see in the figure right now the bolus bolus is in the oral cavity and this bolus will enter into the oropharynx okay but the question is how this bolus has passed to the oropharynx that is the question so over here as you can see it is written that the movement of tongue against the palate for example this is the tongue okay and this tongue is moving against the palate in which direction upward and backward so this tongue which is moving against the palate against the palate in upward and backward direction it is actually it is actually applying the pressure on the bolus and in this course this tongue is pushing the bolus to the oropharynx so the bolus due to the pressure of the tongue this bolus enters into the oropharynx okay and we can move our tongue according to our will so that's why this stage is the voluntary stage of the swallow in okay so this is the third point okay now moving on the fourth point of our discussion now over here the fourth point is written that the bolus is right now it is in the oro pharynx now when the bolus in the oro pharynx the involuntary pharyngeal stage of swallowing begins okay now what happens as you can see over here right now this bolus this bolus is in the oro pharynx okay and this is the this one this one is the this one is the wall of <coughs> wall of oro pharynx okay so as you can understand the bolus is applying pressure on the wall of the oro pharynx so now in the wall of this oro pharynx there are receptor receptor cell okay and this receptor cell they are stimulated so what this receptors are doing so they are sending the nerve impulses to our brain okay in the brain there is a swallowing center that is the deglutition center is there okay and this deglutition center is present in our brain stem okay so where in where exactly in the brain stem so medulla oblongata and lower pons remember this thing okay so when the bolus is applying the pressure on the wall of oropharynx the receptors in the wall of oropharynx they are stimulated and they are sending the nerve impulse to the deglutition center and the brain that is the brain stem and where exactly in the brain stem that is the medulla oblongata and the lower pons now what this medulla oblongata and the lower pons they are doing so they are sending back the nerve impulse over here 
so the motor nerves sending the nerve impulse to this two structure okay now what are this two structure okay so here you can see the name is this the name of this structure are the soft palate and the uvula okay so the returning nerve impulse what they are doing they are causing the soft palate and uvula to move upward and close off the naso pharynx so here you can see that bolus was here due to the tongue now it has enter into the oropharynx so now once the food is in the oropharynx the food particle should not enter into the nasal cavity or the food material should not enter in our nose so the entry of the nasal cavity should be close so this soft the soft palate and uvula they are acting as the door and due to the nerve impulse they are closing as you can see over here they are closing the passage towards the nasal cavity okay so <clears throat> we know at the end of the nasal cavity the naso pharynx is present so the food particle cannot enter into the naso pharynx okay so that is the meaning of this fourth point okay you go through this point and you observe the figure okay so <clears throat> you also try to understand what exactly happening over here okay so right now food is in the oropharynx now we are moving on the fifth point now as you can see with the purple box area in this figure we are focusing into this area okay so food is in the oropharynx and we are discussing this point okay now this part this tube okay this tube we know this is the larynx and inferior to the larynx we know the trachea is there and we are familiar with the branch of the trachea then the tracheoles and the alveoli in the lungs okay where this trachea ends that we are having the idea about the respiratory system now what happens the food as you can see the bolus is in the inferior parts of the pharynx that is the oropharynx and it is <coughs> towards the laryngopharynx now what is happening that this epiglottis is closing the opening of larynx so that the bolus cannot enter into the respiratory tract and the bolus can move can pass in the laryngopharynx for example here let's say over here okay at this point now let's say this is the bolus okay and due to the swallowing the bolus has entered into oropharynx and now this bolus wants to enter into the laryngopharynx area but the, so you see the position of the epiglottis okay so at this time 
this passage for the larynx is open and if this epiglottis is not closing this passage of larynx what will happen the food particle can enter through the larynx into our respiratory tract so to avoid this what this epiglottis is doing so this epiglottis is covering the entire opening passage of the larynx so basically it is closing the larynx when the bolus is traveling from oropharynx to laryngopharynx so that the food particle from the bolus cannot enter into our respiratory tract okay and now the bolus moves through oropharynx to the laryngopharynx so that is the meaning of this fifth point you go through this point and you also observe this figure okay what ex exactly <coughs> happening now moving on the sixth point this is the sixth point over here they are discussing about the esophageal sphincter okay now what is happening esophageal sphincter relaxes now first of all i am showing you the esophageal sphincter as you can see over here you can read this upper esophageal sphincter is contracted so this arrow and this arrow so as you can see now since this sphincter that is the upper esophageal it is contracted okay so the passage of esophagus is very narrow this passage i am talking about this is very very narrow passage and now if this sphincter is contracted let's say the bolus is right now in the laryngopharynx okay so if the if the sphincter is contracted the bolus cannot enter into the esophagus so that's why over here what is happening the upper esophageal sphincter relaxes so as you can see the sphincter over here the same sphincter has now relax okay so we can say the esophagus <coughs> the tube of esophagus has now dilated okay it has widened up so the bolus can now enter into the esophagus okay and once you see <coughs> once one minute one minute see once the once the bolus has enter over here you can see once the bolus has enter into esophagus so again what is happening the upper esophageal sphincter has contracted once again okay so that is the meaning of this point that is the point number 6 okay you read this point and you observe this three figure okay now moving on the seventh point of our discussion now the iso physical stage of the swallowing 
Now when this stage begins, so once the bolus enters into the esophagus, this esophageal stage starts. Okay, and during this esophageal stage, what are the events that are taking place? So during this esophageal stage, there is the process of peristal peristalsis occurring into the entire length of the esophageal tube. Now what is peristalsis? See, this is the this is the wall of esophagus and in the wall of esophagus there are circular muscle layer and the longitudinal muscle layers are there and this circular and longitudinal muscle they rhythmically contract and relax and this contraction and relaxation they are pressurizing the bolus so due to the peristaltic movement due to the contraction and relaxation of circulation circular and longitudinal muscle the bolus moves into the esophageal tube that is the meaning of this seventh point and which are the other structure in which the peristalsis occurring so generally it is occurring it is taking place in the tubular structures for example the other parts of the gi tract the ureter then in the bile duct then the uterine tube okay and the process of peristalsis is controlled by medulla oblongata so with this we have completed the seventh point of our discussion you can go through this point and now we are moving on the eighth point of our discussion now what is happening in the section of esophagus just superior to the bolus the circular muscle are contracting okay and the contraction applying the pressure for example this wall they are talking this is the wall of esophagus okay and this is the bolus so over here circular muscle where they are exactly present over here in this wall they are present circular muscle and what the circular muscle are doing they are they are contracting okay so this region so this region is constricted now and due to this constriction of the esophagus so this constricted region is somewhat applying pressure on this bolus so this bolus move toward the stomach okay so this is the eight point that is the contraction of circular muscle which are present on which are present in the esophageal tube just above the bolus okay this is the eighth point and this contraction of the circular muscle it is pressurizing the bolus and the bolus moves towards the stomach that was the eighth point of our discussion now coming on the ninth point 
of our discussion okay now in the ninth point they are mentioning about the longitudinal muscle so the uh, for example i am drawing this this is the wall of esophagus and i am also showing you the longitudinal muscle okay so over here i have drawn the longitudinal muscle now what is happening now this longitudinal muscle they contract and they contract so due to the contraction of longitudinal fibers <coughs> or the muscles what is happening this region as you can see this region has shortened this region is shortened and the contraction occurs in the outward direction okay so this part this part is somewhat broader one this part of the tube where the bolus is coming this portion has widened up so this bolus can easily come into this wider part okay so this is the meaning of the ninth point regarding the contraction of the longitudinal muscle fiber now moving on the 10th point of our discussion now the contraction are repeated in waves and this waves they are pushing the food toward the stomach now you see over here first the circular muscle the circular muscle is contracting so this contraction is applying pressure on this bolus so when the bolus is pressurized due to the contraction of the circular muscle that time this muscles which are present around the bolus they are relax okay and the muscle inferior to the bolus this muscle over here right now i am showing you the longitudinal muscle in the esophageal tube and now this longitudinal muscles are now contracting and they are contracting outward direction so this passage <coughs> broadens up this passage is broadened up and the bolus enter see bolus enter over here so this again the circular muscle contract this muscles are relax and longitudinal muscle then they will contract so bolus will reach over here then circular contract this muscles are relax longitudinal contract okay so this is how due to the wave of the contraction relaxation contraction contraction of circular muscle then the relaxation of the muscle around the bolus and the contraction of the longitudinal muscle so this is this is actually the process of peristalsis and due to the peristalsis as you can see the bolus has now entering into the stomach okay so this was the 10th point of our discussion now moving on the 11th point of our discussion okay now 11th point the 11th point is like this now the bolus has approach at the end of esophagus so when the bolus reach to the end of the esophagus so this is this area this area is the junction of the where the esophagus and the stomach are joining okay so as you can see over here where the esophagus opens into stomach at this juncture 
the lower esophageal sphincter is present and as the bolus is coming this sphincter this pincher the muscles of this pincher they are relax so this bolus can now easily enter into the stomach okay so this is the 11th point of our discussion you read this point i have explained this point and you observe this figure okay so now moving on the last point of our today's discussion this is the 12th point the mucus secretion okay see when the bolus this bolus this in the bolus we know there is a saliva okay saliva has mixed from the salivary gland and one more thing that is the mucus so during the entire journey entire journey of this bolus in the wall of esophagus there are the mucus gland and they are secreting mucus and the mucus is watery slippery liquid so this mucus is lubricating the esophageal tube from inside so the bolus can easily pass or it can easily move throughout the length of the eso phageal tube and this mucus is also reduces the friction between the bolus and the inner wall of the esophagus so that is the meaning of this first line now the timing how much time it will take the food that we eat to enter in our stomach so over here it is written that the solid or the semi solid food will enter in the stomach from our mouth within 4 to 8 second and very soft food and the liquids will take only 1 second time to reach to the stomach so let's say we are drinking the glass of water so that <coughs> it will take only 1 second time to reach all the water to the stomach so that is the meaning of this 12th point before i wind up this lecture i would like to show you one more figure this is regarding the peristalsis and the movement of food so i have already explained the mechanism of peristalsis and this is the movement of food i have already explained to you but by your own you can read this okay so with this i have completed the presentation lecture on the swallowing i hope you have enjoyed this presentation lecture and at the same time i hope this presentation lecture will be helpful in your exam preparation in your studies my name is manish kushti sir i am from ahmedabad india bye bye namaste